So Sensei, your journey to becoming a Tea Master is really interesting. Um, so originally you are from Canada and That's you correct. came to Japan in the 80s to study Budo, but weren't you studying Kung Fu in Hong Kong before that? Yes, I was. Yeah. Uh, uh, in Canada, I was doing a little bit of uh, martial arts. I was kickboxing and things like that and Taekwondo and some Wing Chun originally brought me to, to Hong okay. Kong with a friend of mine. So we went to Hong Kong. He was actually a Chinese fellow that was being introduced to his wife to be. So he said he's going to Hong Kong. And I said, okay, I'll go with you. And so he uh, left and I went with him and just kind of never went back. I went back to Canada a couple of times in the interim, but I started doing Kung Fu in Hong Kong. And then about eight, I don't know, eight, 10 years, I can't remember. Uh, I was kind of, it was probably my age and my understanding of things. I wasn't really satisfied with the way my, my uh, Kung Fu was progressing. So I wanted to find something a little bit more with a path, Michi, the way. Yes. And so any, any of the Japanese martial arts had a very easy to understand. They usually end it with the, the Chinese character for path or way, meaning Do. So originally I wanted to come to Japan to study Kendo and then uh, Iaido. Iaido yeah. being the art of drawing the sword and Kendo, of course, using the, the sword. And so I left Hong Kong to come to Japan to study the, the martial arts. And uh, I can't remember the exact year, 84, 85, something like that. I, I know you studied um, several, including Kendo, Kudo, which is archery, as you mentioned, yes. uh, Yaido, sword drawing. And I had, I had a student who uh, taught me some Yaido. So that was really oh, interesting yes. for me. And yeah. um, you also did... Um, Naginata, which Naginata, yes, I did Naginata. It's a, it's similar to a halberd. Uh, it's a long pole with a blade affixed to it. It was often used by the foot soldiers, and uh, more uh, recently in Japanese history, it's a weapon that's attributed to the women of the warrior families. Uh, it's something that they would use to defend their homes and things like that, and uh, the traditions. Again, there are many schools. Um, I was doing Jikishin Kage Ryu of, of the uh, Naginata tradition. And uh, these traditions are, unlike a lot of the, uh, most of the martial arts are run by men, these traditions are run by women. Uh, and so kind of interesting to see how it has progressed through that. And so how, how long did you study and how proficient did you become at these various uh, Japanese martial arts? Uh, proficiency might not be the adequate word, but uh, I studied for quite a long time. Uh, I, in uh, the two sword style, uh, me told you I was a Rokudan, a Renshi Rokudan, which is a first, first level instructor with a sixth degree. Oh, wow. And then in Iaido, in uh, Tamiyodu, I was a first. Godan, uh, Renshi Godan, which is uh, a fifth degree with the first level instructor. And then in Kudo, I was a, a Godan, which is a fifth degree. Uh, and then the other ones, I kind of forget. I'm thinking somewhere third degree, second degree. So I wow. probably have about 25 degrees <laughs> of black belts. But oh, let's like all the in the path. You sound like the ultimate martial artist. I mean, that, that sounds like, like a, a lot of levels of proficiency there. That's pretty much in the past. Now I'm just a fat okay. old tea, tea guy. <laughs> oh, well, we all have to slow down and enjoy life. And Yeah. So that, I guess that leads to the, this idea of, at some stage, you wanted to connect um, more culturally or you wanted to connect your martial arts training to, to Japanese culture. And initially you tried learning um, koto, which my That's correct. Wife, wife plays, and also um, calligraphy. Mm -hmm. And you yes. sounded like you struggled with those two. Yeah, I always tell the story of, well, even when I was in Hong Kong, when I was doing kung fu and things like that, I learned a phrase. Uh, in Japanese, we say bumbu ryodo which is the martial boon, not boon. It's the cultural martial ways together in unison. Kind of like the American military concept of an officer and a gentleman. I see. You don't want to just be a thug and beat somebody. You want to beat them artistically. So you need that kind of a, a balance <laughs> to it. And so um, 
when I first came here, as you just, uh, or as I just mentioned, and you knew was that I did a lot of martial arts, but I felt kind of a, an imbalance in my yin and yang, so to speak. Uh, I needed some kind of balance. So I wanted to live my life in this boom, booty, odo style. So I wanted to balance my martial side with something cultural. And as you mentioned, I tried calligraphy and, uh, the okoto, which is a Japanese harp, for those that don't understand it, it's a long plank of wood with strings on it, and mm. apparently I had no talent for either. <laughs> and so that's what led me to the tea. Actually, it's not true. I was doing tea at the same. I kind of picked them all up at around the same time. Oh, probably okay. within six months of coming to Japan, I was doing everything, which was probably a problem because I was doing too much. Oh wow! It's probably why I couldn't focus so much, but. Um, yeah, so I, like I said, I needed to balance that martial side with the cultural side, so I was looking for something to do culture, and that ultimately led me to the way of tea. 